was not a proper science person. Biology is again not at all my cup of coffee. I, I don't have any interest in biology. So you can't actually ask anybody for this. He's the perfect example of how much a hardworking person can at see. Because I'm not a hardworking person myself, I cannot admit to it. That's why when we see students right now, I mean, they are actually confronting me with this question. I don't know how to answer it. In fact, the entire first day of our show, where I had done almost fifty percent of necrology, was second time shot. So, so as you see nowadays in the residency, we are getting a lot of cases of societal mental harassment among us. Uh, so, what advice you will give the seniors to how to you know interact with their juniors? Ours is a proper amazing smell. It's Kerala Matrimony dot com. If you are not comfortable in any relationship or in any college or in any place you work, the only way to treat that is to. Get up, but that is that is the only advice in this entire podcast that I can absolutely give you. If you want to take something out of me, I love the person both. So I'm always in favor of people dropping the person. Hi guys, this is Dr. Vishal, and welcome to the podcast Beyond the White Coat. Today, on the very first episode, we have a special guest, Dr. Rakesh Nasa. I know this introduction will not suffice. Therefore, let's start our talk Beyond the White Coat and unleash his story. And before that, I would like to thank our sponsors, Red Nader, for their immense support. And I want you to subscribe to our channel if not already done. Hi guys, uh, today we have a very special guest with us, Dr. Rakesh S. Nair, sir. We are very happy to introduce you to the, my audience, sir. Hi. So my first question is, sir, growing up, what was your family background? What was your primary aim in childhood? Um, so good afternoon everyone, uh, this is I think a uh, very uh, difficult question to answer primarily because uh, I did not have any such aims or targets or anything while growing up. I was uh, born in Kochi, uh, the very same place where we're doing this podcast from. And uh, I belong to a uh, pretty uh, upper middle class family you can put it in that way. My father is professor in college and the mom, mom is housewife and uh, basically you don't have any siblings. So it's a bit pretty much easy paced life here, they're going to school, coming back from school. Very happily. My father is the person who actually tried to keep imbibing me, imbibing in me this path that you have to become successful, successful, successful. So I, from the beginning, hearing about this word called being successful. But in school, really, I have no idea what is the meaning of being successful. So that is always behind me. And then he has himself given me small, small tasks to try and uh, manipulate and try and do. And I was always doing that. And probably I was uh, from the beginning instead somebody who used to study well at school. But I never had any ideas like medicine or anything that came up at a much later point. But again, this whole idea of people having to value what you do and whatever you do has to stand out, right? So when you are 14, 15 years, the only way that you can stand out is to either represent the country in cricket like, like Sanju or maybe do medicine because those times even much more than now, there was a lot of hype around medicine. So when you are in 10th standard and you go for a marriage function, you see a boy or a girl, 18, 19 years old, who's doing first year or second year MBBS. The way the society looks at them and the way the people look at them, is like you get awestruck and you want to become that. That's how I wanted to become. I really had no interest. I used to have tantrums going to the hospital. They need to take an injection. So I was basically not this kind of person. And these subjects did not naturally come to me. History, geography, English and literature was something which came to me very naturally. It's constantly a person who used to debate, I used to do extempers, I used to do all these kinds of activities. But I was not a proper science person. I was a person who used to tend to do well, but I think the methodology of learning science was not correct. That's like doing all the sums and then by far to all that and then going and giving the exam. But then because I wanted to do this course, just because this course have course out of all I guess, uh, I changed my study pattern and then at a point decided that I had to do this. So, but uh, even though obviously like, everything you have done is from the government is right? yeah. MBBS, MD, PM, even your MR, CPR, and when uh, your fellowship in cardiology, yeah. yeah. So, it's really commendable. It's like it's actually an honor for me to post into the area. That is basically again going with natural skills. That means my, my parents always emphasized on the need to pick up your natural ability. So, I think my natural ability is the fact that I think I can to an extent much more quickly. Uh, condensed facts to get an analysis to get an understanding so that is my natural ability so I just go with my natural ability whenever you try to do things which are out of your comfort zone or out of your box then that's when I think there's a bit of a struggle because you always I always try to compete always try to see where I stand 
and we try to do so many so many things but in those things you understand and the point that there are people who you whatever you try you can't maybe get on top but i think this is something which i feel is a kind of my fault so essentially that is what has uh, driven me forward even though achieving all these things um, in a childhood just asking for fun uh, you were front bencher or back bencher many students want to know this actually i am a person who sits in the back bench but i'm very attentive in class i don't go and sit in the front bench because i feel a little odd and straight having this teacher right in front of me so just to avoid that i go and sit in the back so what were your prime struggles as a you know in childhood that during study you were getting distracted to you know you want to do career in those subjects or actually uh, my point is my parents instilled this in me that like if during those times there are only three options first is civil service second is medicine third is engineering so to pursue engineering you need to take max computer in level right and i am not a computer person so i cannot take max in the c++ is the language which is obviously very alien to me yes. then the option is to do humanities and go for civil service or you can take up medicine so everybody is under the impression that civil service is what the best to do is to so you also have to do civil service but then there is no humanities group in my school i am going somewhere else and doing humanities everybody was saying that in case you don't get civil service you don't have anything to non con so obviously we'll try to do medicine medicine is the best place in a super like that but the problem is like biology is there physics is there chemistry is there and physics is a subject which i have never found any kind of thing with uh i felt like just going somewhere so this coming somewhere it is an art kind of fine thing biology is again not at all my cup of coffee i, I don't have any interest in bio chemistry is the only subject which i have a proper thing with which I, again i found at the beginning itself and that is what actually actually kind of paved the way for me finally taking up a subject like nephrology because nephrology is also about sodium potassium calcium phosphorus this periodic table on the arcane organic chemistry i was actually speaking taking class for students in that when i was in 12th i was taking class for like standard students in chemistry so that level of sync i have with the subject so once i started learning chemistry i knew that even if i did not get into mbbs obviously i can pursue career in chemistry this that's the level of sync i have with the subject and me being the son of a prominent uh, faculty in the college i could always uh, have direct talks with people who were my father's colleagues at that time they were all like college professors university professors so i knew that teachers are always at different levels we have our school teacher who also teaches chemistry a university college professor who also teaches the same topic but then there is considerable difference and that is what made me understand that yes there are different levels of there are different levels at which you can do things add so chemistry to the nephrology completes the circle it completes the circle yes because the entire chapter that we sorry the entire uh, hemodialysis that we talk about is an extension of a chapter we study in 12 standard con solutions yes so uh, it's ex- essentially the same so uh, it's ex- essentially the same being the first doctor in the family would it have been like beneficial for you someone i um, said if you had a godfather in the parody like you know that would have been a huge problem that would have actually been a big issue because my father thinks that in spite of not being a doctor would interfere in everything that i am doing <laughs> so if you were a doctor means i would have been finished because then they come and ask when is this exam how do you perform in this exam what are your strengths weaknesses this course you can pursue that course you can pursue i think that's going to be a huge issue issue privately because then there will be 10 people talking about your career choices which is definitely not nice if you get started well start at when somebody talks about career choices that's good because you're very new but after all if people start interfering with respect to your career choices that really doesn't make any sense and when we do offline classes etc we can see between parts of the country that parents come with these stuff and they kind of consider them as uh, what he said like too too small it is absolutely not the way to go if you're not clear on what you want to do with career when you are never in your life are you going to be clear on what you want and so 70 18 that's okay but definitely not asked yes only i think if your father has an established hospital setup the other than that nothing is of any value but if you are in a tier 2 city tier 1 city also it's of no value yes if you are in a tier 2 city and your father has an established hospital and there are people coming and running into the hospital then probably that may have some kind of an advantage but that to provide you have the same personality that means if you are a person who is not like your father who may be actually very nice and very benevolent with patients yes. and you are a person who speaks more out in the open that back out of fact yes so you can you are generalized that way but at least that will keep you uh stable in in that regard you know respect the name like yeah respect the name that is again made in it for me and me basically can't keep ourselves in their place my father keeps stopping about the fact that there was no current when he was studying but that doesn't mean that i could to switch off the light instead right yeah so i can't understand that when it when it actually comes to me it comes more like a comedy but that may be may have been a struggle at that time yes but we can't come into that space 
But sir, if you had to tell your students, like, oh, what were my struggles? Many people keep asking me this question. Yes. Like, oh, what during MBBS and all? I was in a pretty decent shape during MBBS. A friend, so like, friend circle like good. We had a pretty good postings. We were I mean, taught well. And during those times, <clears throat> I'm not saying those times are like very far, but even before, during a decade back, the thing is like we had multiple options. I was not adamant of the fact that I have to do medicine like most of the people now. If I had were like five hundred ranks less, I would have studied maybe pulmonary medicine. If another five hundred ranks good, I would have studied anesthesia, or I would have studied psychiatry, I would have studied okay, so many options. Or if I was okay with pharmacology, I was very okay with community medicine. For me, the point is about being successful in what you do. It's not mandatory that you have to do this. You give me a task, I'll try to do the task to perfection. For me, everything is a task. If you know would be in the lock corners outside, you can do it and be perfect. In. So there is nothing like that. But there are certain things I can't do. Obviously, it is against my taste. Like, you know, engineering doesn't come to me. Yeah, apart from another routine course, everything anyone can do. But what do you think? Like, what is the formula <laughs> that you have to have in your X factor? And, you know, to get into the any course and to have that confidence that this is for me. Because that course would demand a certain core value. Or something would be there that is the soul of the course, or the core of the course. If you look at a course like LLB, you have to envisage yourself going in there, stay right in the center. And make your conversation confidently with the with the judge or whoever. Yeah. And when you imagine yourself in that space, where language is not good, if you don't feel you are that kind of person who talks out to the open, then when you please yourself, that it may not work. Yes, that's the whole idea. What I'm trying to say: means your personality and that particular profession that you're pursuing have to match. Or the profession needs to like you rather than you liking the profession. We may like radiology, but if you are not a person for radiology, then what point? Yes. Yeah. So it's not the scope that we are actually looking for. Better than you can place yourself in that particular space. When you think of placing yourself in that space, then whether you're feeling comfortable. When I think of placing myself in the cockpit during the descent of a flight, I, even the thought gives me a fear. Because I don't feel I'm equipped enough to deal with that. Yes. Yeah, I'm not equipped enough. So that means that I can't place myself there. But I may be actually passing the course it will put me for a pilot training course, but I feel no, I will pass. But finally, that person who has that feeling from within inside, no, five, six years, he is confident by himself, he may easily outclass. So that is why understanding our strengths and placing ourselves in those things and seeing if we have a way forward. That's the advantage of medicine. Medicine gives you 24 subjects to pursue PG. So naturally, there will be few subjects which will come in your fort and few subjects which will not come. Yes. So if you choose wisely and that way in a good place, you can set up your career. It's not like something else which is really dynamic. This is not that right. Many students get confused after MBA just like exactly what is my branch of first. It's not my branch of choice. It is getting exposed to what is actually medicine. Mm-hmm. Because your MBA course nowadays is so lopsided in a way that not getting absolutely enough case exposure. Many times depleted with respect to the course. So how do I envisage myself in this course? Where do I stand? Because this course was there even before I was born. And even after we are all dead also this course will continue. So course doesn't need us to survive. It's we who need the force to survive. So if the course is starting to dictate terms, that means that we are a loser. So we should be able to figure out some way inside the course through which we can actually do what we want. So you may be needing, you may be an introvert person, you may be needing space for yourself, time for yourself. And if that way you want a job and that is something relating to medicine. And you take up a subject like general medicine where you're running around all the time, having duties and all that. So it doesn't make sense. Yes. So what do you want out of the course? Accordingly, how can I place myself in that? And then how do I ask me make a target, make a plan and execute that plan? Should be individualized. I choose the individualized approach. You can't actually ask anybody for this. Somebody who is giving you an advice on this, I think you have to switch off the TV. Yes. There is no way somebody can advise. That means you should have clarity of your thoughts. You should have clarity of thoughts. And that is what you have to always pray when you go to the temple or church or mosque. You have to always pray to give clarity of thoughts. Clarity of thoughts. If you have clarity of thoughts, I think it's 90% of the job done. Where we fail is where we don't have clarity of thoughts. And that's when we compromise. Yes. And when we compromise, 90% of the time we fail. And this random question uh, is like, do you believe in God? Like, what is your... Obviously, you know, I, I believe in that supreme power which is controlling us. Now, that's why sometimes when we go to the ISU, we are blank and we don't do anything for the patient. Sometimes we go to the ISU and we get some extraordinary power from within and we do certain things, which we also think, how did I do? Exactly. So who made you do that? So that's some power. And that power is obviously there. You can, you can accept that power in whichever way you want. But that is definitely that power. So my, as a person, my option as, as and when I was doing my schooling is to either pursue art subject and then try to get into college as a teacher. Or then maybe try to similar service. Or then do something like this. So that I don't have to regret. People regret primarily because they may be so talented like we see the students here know that. They may be having multitude of talents. And then they are having to sit and prepare for an APD exam which is not their natural for it. 
that is the thing. That doesn't mean that he or she is inferior or superior. Yes. But the point is that they are doing something where after leaving away something else, where they could have actually gone on. The same Sanju Samson, because he got a chance to play cricket only, he is this person now. If you are putting him in medical college and say that you are a this student then batch, it doesn't make sense. Right? No, so that's what. So identifying that that's what is still is the most important part. I am not a huge believer of hard work. I am a much more stronger believer of natural skill. Apart from your medicine journey, I know you are pretty busy with it, yeah. your uh, practices and your teaching. Yeah. But apart from that, when you, get, when you find the three times, yeah. so what are your hobbies? I have, I think, got only one hobby, and that's, I think, traveling. And that's my only hobby, I guess. I don't have any other hobbies, basically, guess. But I have a very strong follower of uh, local of region and cinema. Okay. Very strong follower of regional cinema to the extent that every, every single movie you watch like that. Apart from that, but that's only theaters only. But apart from that, I think traveling. Because I basically don't like sitting at home. I'm trying to find out ways to not sit at home and come and sleep only at home. That should be the motto of your life. Getting up in the morning at home and then doing activity, 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 some or the other. And finally, you're becoming so tired that when you get into your home exit, you will see. Bothered about what I feel is like, what are the people who are around me expecting out of me? Yeah, so that goes up my tasks. I'm very clear about my tasks. So every day, I'm trying to execute tasks to perfection. Yes. Yeah, but I think that is something which uh, may not strike the right chord many times because you'll be... Many people are going with emotions. So I'm not going with emotions. I'm seeing things as tasks. That means being the father of the school going telling is also not an emotion for me. It's a task. So that is around expected things, being a father. So those expectations, I'm trying to eat just like a task. If I don't take it like that and take it in a natural sense, I think you will not do what is expected. Many people are under the assumption that, okay, you please accept me naturally. Let me tell you clear that nobody will accept you naturally. Your parents, baby, that too. A father is first in mark. Mother may accept. That's it. But apart from that, nobody will accept. So you would need to be in a way that is acceptable to the other person. So if you don't do that, then probably you will fall behind. Under you will fall behind. Whether it be a small kid or a grandfather, it doesn't make difference. You have to be in a way that that is aligned to what is expected out of you. If you do that, then that's only anything you better be accepted. And one of the uh, I mean, like start of this development is when you get into the hostel, right, sir? Yeah. So hostel is again, because I did my MBBS completely in hostel, PG also in hostel. But by end of Fiji and DM time is married, so we're in the house. So I think uh, that is also such an integral part. Now we see people from different different startups, yeah, from different districts in the same state, and you get to gel with them. But I'm a person who generally gets along with everyone, so I am not have any particular struggle like that. Because apart from medicine and rest of the things in in rest of the things that we do, I am like any it's okay for me. Anything is okay for me. That is why I don't think like hundred times before I do something and or nothing. I have basically got a task that I have to perform and gather things I'm very chill, very okay. So are you introvert or extrovert? Definitely. Extrovert, I, I want to be the example of an extrovert. <laughs> yeah, old standard. Old standard of what is extrovert. Exactly. So uh, next question is tea person or coffee person? Tea person. Because in Kerala generally we, we are more into tea. So I think even not just in Kerala almost everywhere. But coffee does help you in fact if you are having the habit and taking coffee definitely go for that. But I am a tea person. Teaching or practicing? Definitely practice. Teaching is something that accidentally came to me. I really still don't know why I have a teacher. I've got no idea. It's just because the feedback is good that I'm again going and taking class. I never studied with an idea that I have to teach. I did MBBS everything with the idea that I have to practice. And I have to practice in apology. That is the only thing that I consider as my occupation. This is something that I don't know whether it comes to me at all. But people are saying, okay, no, good, I'm doing it. Somebody says, stop, please, I will stop. So that's why, <laughs> don't stop. You don't stop. So if somebody says, your class is good, then of course we will open the next one. Yes. Apart from that, next question is said, uh, are you a book person or a book person? I'm a movie person. I, I read books only pertaining to medicine. Other than that is philosophy book, novel, fiction, and all. And nothing maybe. I read useless magazines for the interview my that. <laughs> Yeah, and then I watch all movies. Movies also with great content and all I cannot watch. Yes. Or local movies. Right? Yeah, that's Is it, it man? That's it. Yeah, that's it. Uh, cricket fan of footballs. Cricket, cricket. 100%. Yeah, I, I know cricket better than medicine, I guess. But for, yeah, much better. I think if I think from, from you ask me anything about I think so many cricket was called the DM, it's a type of one. Okay, so yeah, cricket is something which comes to us. I do not. So I do like cricket. I will another with like sub game of this. Choose one. Yeah, yeah. at every time. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So the uh, let's start it. So the first one is uh, Sachin or Kohli. Obviously, when you look at the way cricket was played when Sachin was batting and now with Kohli is batting, they have two different things. Yeah. But primarily, just because of the reason, then we were not such a solid team those years. 
We were a team expected to lose. And we go to New Zealand, we are expected to lose. When you go to Australia, we are expected to lose. Exactly. So we are the underdogs. So Sachin played at a point where we are the underdogs. Yes. When you compare to Kohli, Kohli played at a point where we are a dominant our international. That means when you go to England also, we will give us a chance. So that's a big difference. You are talking to me because I am already a known person. You are interviewing me at 12 standard, which is so hard for me to come and convince you. So Sachin played at a point then, uh, we were basically beaten, battered by all the teams, going and getting out 100 runs, 90 runs. So that's why Sachin was the He was the only hope at that time. He was the only hope. That means when he gets out, you should drop the beat. That's how it was. It was. So and, uh, he was the only person who seemed like putting up some kind of a competition. Yes. Others were just kind of making up, I mean, surrounding him. That's it. Nothing more. Let's start with the uh, Sanju Samson or Hadik Pandey. Obviously, uh, see, Sanju being a care light and like obviously I have a lot of feelings toward yeah, the seas that person who is represented our state in a big way. Hardik is so multi-talented. So again, we talk about this natural ability. You know, I feel, I don't know that Hardik realizes or not, but I realize that he's born to do this. And he's just, just coming so easy to him. Whether it be batting, bowing, feeding, it comes with captaincy, he's a last step. It comes so effortlessly, effortlessly to him. So because of that, if he doesn't achieve, I think, something great, then we should be kicking on his back because uh, God doesn't give that much of talent here. And Sanju is also talented, yes. But there are many people talented, like yes. But Hartik is like one specimen. Yes. He's got so much of talent, like the sculpt that he makes himself better. Yes. Now on the field, so. In all the fields. That means whatever he does, it, I, mean, I I believe that he doesn't do so much of hard work. I don't know the person, but I still feel that he may be working optimum only, but he's so super talented. But something what happens is when you are super talented, you may not make use of the talent. Yes. Yeah. So I hope he makes use. Okay, so so next is little difficult. Rohit Sharma on Virat Kohli. Or is Rohit Sharma because I am a huge believer of national ability. No, Virat is a person who is programmed himself to play like this. Exactly. He needs to play like this. He analyzes to play like this. He is the perfect example of how much a hardworking person can achieve. Because I am not a hardworking person myself, I cannot relate to him. So I can relate to Rohit totally Sharma. That's because Rohit Sharma is very lazy. I am also like him generally. But then we always back on the fact that see when you see Rohit Sharma on the field. You may look, he, you may think he's like, what, when he's not even doing it effectively, right? you get his bendy at all outside, so you think like that. But then when he comes and bats, he scores a 6 no. So even if you are like, I was a huge fan of Insa Bhavanar. Yes. Insa Bhavanar, the legendary Pakistan player, who couldn't even run properly, that is ISIS. But then he comes and does the job. And, yeah, yeah, so that's a perfect example that you can actually give to the student also. That means Virat is talented, not saying not talented, but how much hard work can take you is like, you can see through Virat. And even if you are not very hardworking, still if you are ta- multi-talented, that's why we're saying we shouldn't look at somebody and make a comparison. Yes. If you try looking at uh, Rohit Sharma, then you can only really get disappointed. Yes. Because we cannot be like you. Exactly. But Virat is setting an example, which a youngster can follow. Yes. That means if you kind of do so many things finally at the point, you become a legend. Yes. Uh, are you interested more in life or online teacher? Actually, when I was a student, then was the online class. So I can learn only through a night class. Yes. I cannot learn through an online class. But then I became popular through online class. Yeah, so obviously it's very hard for me to say. And on stage, my class is very different from the offline class. But the pro- online class, but the problem is the title that we have on stage is so less Then we can't actually establish, if you want to establish in these, then it takes two or three days. But now students don't have time for those two or three days. Yes. So that right now the way forward is definitely online only. Yes, sir. Since you told that uh, you are a big fan of traveling, so are you a hill person or a beach person? I'm not a hill person or a beach person. I want to just go to one city and explore the city. As you said, you are from Aurangabad. I told you, you know, I went to Aurangabad. Yes. So my purpose is to just go to that city. That city may not be a tourist destination. To just experience that. How people live there, what are their basic wings of living, what food do they eat, all this. And this explore the city, stay there for some time. But actually, it doesn't come to me naturally. But it started out with me going for these classes. So I traveled all across the country to take class. Before these online things, when I was a PG student. And towards the end of my PG. So I got to see so many of these places. But one of the things have to be is just, um, I can't say like that. But then, of course, having studied in Chennai, my connect with Chennai is much more than anything else. Although physically present here, I believe to present mentally I am in Chennai. So that much of connect I have with the city. As you want me, ask me one place I want to go. Definitely Chennai. But John doesn't mean that Chennai is a tourist place for my stay. Not like that. But then I have my own lot of personal connect with Kolkata, I'm in the bar, all these places that I like all these places. So obviously can't choose one. Yes, just to enumerate 
what would be your top three suggestions for the MBBS students who are just getting with MBBS and for their preparation for the next exam? Um, it's a little difficult for me because uh, the MBBS that I've done and the MBBS that's now being actually followed is a little different. But I think the first one is obviously to understand the fact that we can learn only from the hospital exposures what that matters. So to spend as much time as possible in your what from second year onwards to be in good connect with your BTs and so that they actually come and show you reporting cases and to discuss those cases with your BTs is the most and most important thing. <laughs> then of course to enhance knowledge on the same and to develop wholesome understanding in the same using an online platform like Maro where when we actually have tried to bring this together would be definitely recommend although. Although I have a teacher, I'm still I feel that. Third is, of course, to not unnecessarily waste time reading textbooks. Most of these people are still, still absolutely sitting with textbooks. Textbooks were at a point where we did not have access to these kind of lectures. I read from textbooks because that was the only way that I could understand Robbins. If there was somebody teaching me Robbins like the way pathology teachers teach now, then I would never read Robbins. And you must also understand that I read Robbins only after I passed out. Not during third year. Third year I was studying Hashimoto only. But later on, I thought I had to enhance my knowledge. That's when I started reading. So if you sit with textbooks, we're wasting time. So apart from that, try to see as many cases as possible, discuss as much, and try to develop what is called as a sense. Mm -hmm. Medicine is based on a kind of a sense. And that we get away from the hospital is what I didn't read. And in most of the time, I do and try to see the culture is like, whenever they have exam in prayer, yeah, in fact, it's only this study. They take uh, questions. That is, that that is the only advice in this entire podcast that I can absolutely give you. If you want to take something out of me, I'm a person who constantly starts. So that is, I think, helped me in a big way. That means for me, preparation on the day prior to the exam, it's as much like, God, now that's really ordinary day. On the day prior to the exam, also, I will sleep eight nine hours and I'm just go for the exam. Because every day, whatever happens, at least thing, like we brush our teeth, I do read around, say, on and out to us. That's a routine, routine thing I've done from school onwards. So because of that cumulative knowledge always develops that. It's not like you throw away the book at one point and then come during the exam. Or we there's no exam there is. The threats we are able to connect in. Yeah, cut yeah, that. Day. I have never studied for any exam like that. So yes. it's like routine process cut. Yes. Uh, apart from that, so it's like most of the students now getting over ambitious for the medical and the yes, yeah, they were. Uh, maybe because of the family pressure, peer pressure, yeah. and maybe their obsession. Yeah. So they sacrifice their adult crew in the yeah. eyes. So after 12th also, they prepare for 3-4 day eye. And then what is your opinion? That is my main and but don't sacrifice anything for medicine because medicine doesn't need you. As I told you already, you know, even before you were born, medicine was there. Even after we are on death, medicine will be there. So medicine doesn't need us. It's we who need medicine. So if medicine makes changes in our life and that's for the reverse swings, then that's completely our fault. We must be using medicine in such a way that we are in a benefit out of medicine and get one step ahead because of medicine. And there is no point in sacrificing anything like that. If you are asking me, I have not sacrificed anything. I don't want anyone to sacrifice anything. You just study your MUS. And then whatever you feel like, see, if you are not doing what a normal guy who is 25 years is able to do with, then that is primarily your problem. Yeah. You have done it. It is because you should be going ahead of the normal guy at 25. Yes. And if you are behind him, it's too small. You are 40. Yeah, so you should be able to do everything what a normal person does. You should be able to get married, you should be able to have kids, you should be able to do everything what a normal person does. If you don't do that and think that, okay, I'm sacrificing with an it at a later point, your personal life will go for toss, 100% go for toss. Medicine is at least like a tennis ball. It will bounce and then come back even if you leave it. Your personal life is like a glass ball. One's got dash. <laughs> okay, Nick. So, but after MBBS, there's no option other than, you know, doing MD nowadays. Yeah, so, obviously that's what I'm saying. No, you have this option of doing MD. Or you have this only option of going for MD. But that's when you have to widen your options and keep, I'm saying, MD is a course of DNB something and it's been done in 24 subjects in our country. Okay, we shouldn't be adamant on the fact that I'm going to do pediatrics only. Just because my grandmother wanted me to be a pediatrician. That is not a rational answer. You have to be just keeping your options wide open. Study properly as much as you can. And what you are actually getting out of the exam, happily take it and see it as an opportunity to expand later on. Rather than being stuck with the idea that I have to do this subject for. It is something which I have not factored you from. I just, uh, I wanted to ask about your journey to become as a teacher from a resident. Yeah. So how you got into the marrow or what was your journey to become a teacher? My journey as a teacher was already absent. So when I was doing my PG in Chennai, uh, I just called up one of our uh, gynecology teachers here, Ashwat Kumar sir. He was a legendary gynecology teacher those days and he was running a coaching center. And he, I called him to talk about the results of the next entrance exam. So then he told me about the fact that everybody is asking about hazardous based tasks in medicine. And I'm not able to find out somebody, can I just come and try? So I said, no sir, I'm having PG course here, nothing. 
But in our PG course, um, you have having six units in medicine, seven units in medicine. So your Saturdays and days are in one and two, you will sometimes be free, etc. So I just came over and tried doing two, three classes like that. Three hour classes, four hour classes. But that somehow kind of struck some on with the audience. So they started asking for more and more classes. And there was some kind of a difference in the kind of plus that, been, uh, that were happening then. Because anybody used to promote textbooks more. But I was a person who was doing the reverse. Exactly. Yeah, so that way it somehow stuck a chord. And then after my course, again, uh, I got into big time teaching. But I left all that for DM, actually speaking. So then I prepared for three months and I met more DM exam and I joined it. So at that point, actually, my core teaching career had come to a standstill. And I had left it totally. And I knew that this was not a way forward. So you just never thought that. Never thought that. that. Because when I was doing PT, because the stipend was so less, I wanted to actually get some income, you know. Yeah, this actually kept me in a very comfortable space. And it's getting a lot of money. Yeah, that attracted me at that point. And then after after finishing the course also, because I was bad at everything, I was thinking yeah. that otherwise I had no income. So this was giving me a lot of income and I became rich suddenly. So I was very happy with that. Then going for DM, I knew that I had to stop this. I either stop this or continue with this. But I wanted to do that. And so I stopped all the things. And then I entered nephrology. Entire one, one and a half years of nephrology. I was not taking even a single class. Completely inside the nephrology department. But at the end of this one and a half years, and I thought I'd link down after one and a half years and practice nephrology. Because even who was my senior for MBBS and MD. Two years he was my senior. And I had lost touch with him for almost five years by then. Because he finished PG and then tried. Yeah. So then one day he just came and then he called me and said that hey, it's time to do so many things. Yeah, he's a person who does hundred things. So I also know I'm not able to contemplate all that. It's beyond my thoughts and all. Yeah. Because I am more even than super say. So then he told me about the scope of online learning and online teaching and all. I mean there is nothing called online. Exactly. We this is yeah, this is in twenty seventeen. So twenty seventeen maybe he's telling me about this, okay. I said, Yeah, fine. Then he said, Okay, I'll just book a ticket for you to Bangalore. If I'm not to Bangalore then. So one day evening you have to come to Baidu and then you have to take class like that. So I was like, okay. Uh, and then I came there and then we did have a shoot. Shoot me, it is not a structured shoot. I was standing there. Then. And there were two friends of his and they were shooting. And then I went up. Yeah, then again I forgot about it for two, three months. Then he became more serious and called me. And that's when we started doing, started doing, started doing something. And then I just kind of. First I was really difficult to speak in front of the camera, right? Yeah, that is a big challenge, yeah. So every time we used to go for shoots and reshoots and reshoots. In fact, the entire first day for a show where I had done almost 50% of necrology oh. was second time short because he felt the content quality was not content quality, the output was not actually as, as he expected. So then we had to do this many times. But that happens, that happens because I had a lot of person who was acting in movies or anything. But obviously my hand will go out of range, they have absolutely bend down or I will not know how to have a proper camera. Like, so that it happens to everyone. Okay, so it's been more across the country, so it's been all uh, the education system, state board actually handles the uh, medical education. So out of which, how would you rank top five states in country? Well, that's very hard. Right? Yes. Actually speaking, I think more these ranks are more college driven than state driven. You can, so obviously I feel that when you see the NEET UG as well as the NEET PG rank, certain colleges tend to perform really well at all times. Okay, so those colleges are of course standing out from the others. So I think those colleges, if I, if I say we can again divide the country into four zones or probably like that. And I think I always keep Kolkata, government college distance, GMC, Aljika, NRS, as well as uh, IPGME and these colleges to stand out exceptionally when it comes to performance for the exam. When you talk about uh, Uspariya as well as uh, Gandhi in Andhra, they always stand out. But as for the college stand out, the college in Madurai stand out. Tarika Trivandrum and Kodev in Kerala stand out. Media and Ahmedabad stands out. So is the Iropiwada as well as your KM in Bombay, they stand out. SOS in Jaipur stands out. And of course, um, daily colleges, MAMSI, UCLS, Safdarja. So these are the colleges which generally stand out. I don't think it's place like kind of thing, but certain colleges stand out. But is it the merit of the college of the student who's studying there is a Western mark. So even if you had put him in some other place, also he would have. Primarily because the input that he gets on the college is more or less depend on how he takes it. But anyway, these students seem to have good amount of clinical set. They're very happy. Even if the student passes out from KEM and he's not a good at getting a life for the entrance, is that stay when actually confronted with a medical issue, he has some kind of things prevailing, which I have seen myself, which is a very welcome sign. In contrast, you getting rank two for me, PD exam, and you're having somebody have never been a seizure right in front of you during your flight, and you are actually reluctant to say that you are an octal means. Yes. Then there's a problem, right? So that way, I feel these students are more. Technically better, like, yeah, it's, um, it's like rather than knowledge, it should be both as skill. Yeah, more as a skill. So 
they can live with the skill because when we actually finished out MBBS, my happiness point was that okay, I have learned the skill. Okay, when which we can live as long as your eyesight is good, as long as your hands are good, as long as you can think, you can live with the status. But now we think people are passing over MBBS with those whole idea of writing me piece. It's like a qualification to write me piece. Actually, it's not that good. So let's come to the fun part now. So I will be uh, the segment is called as imagination. Okay. So in which I'll be uh, creating the imaginative scenarios for you. Yeah. And you have to tell me how you re yeah. have reacted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I hope you have seen night movie. Right? Yeah, I uh, need proposed. Yeah, yeah. So, if you be a health minister for one day, I uh, will also be medical education minister. Yeah. So, across the country, what changes you will think this is? I basically wouldn't make so many changes. First thing is that I cut short all these seats. Yes. And I ensure that there are only seats enough for those people to actually who study for them to prosper. And so that these people don't have a problem after passing on. Yes. So, at the entry point, I just maybe make the seats again, say 50% of the voting stuff. And at the same time, when those 50% try to enhance the PDCs, so that people who get into the UG force me in the PDC, and then they become trained proper doctors. And all these crap places where these courses being done without getting enough PNP exposure, we cut out the license of all those places. Yes. So that privately, somebody whose parents are kind of investing in it, or maybe putting them in a government college, they get happiness at the end of those five years that the son has our daughter has studied something. Which is giving them confidence. Yeah. Now we are seeing some people who want themselves reluctant to see that they are malchus. So that at least been played a voice. Apart from medicine. Apart from medicine in the multiverse. Yeah, we are meeting another Dr. Akash sir. And what would he be doing? I didn't think, but I think the only thing I've been attracted to with is I'm so much into watching movies right from the beginning. And I'm so much attracted to this uh, Suresh Kobi, Mabloti, they are local out here. Was it a I'm attracted to them so much, they are rendering dialogues, talking like police officers. So the only other thing which I probably thought I, I could have done or I maybe I wanted at the back of my mind, although I may not be good at that. Yes. This will be from a star. Yes. Because my thought is always centered towards the star. Though. I always have that in my mind. So something you do you have to be a star at what you You should say, uh, yeah, sir. It's like, uh, you should be, uh, you should, you should have specified that. The other movie movies are already started. Yes. Not that way, but what I'm saying in my movie yes. star. I always, yeah. I kind of... <laughs> I feel the movie star's life is really nice in a way that every day you're getting a new road, a new challenge. Right. At least we have that boredom, so CK, CK, CK. That boredom is not there. A new challenge every day. Right. So you are becoming a new person, an opportunity to become a new person for 30 days. Right. An opportunity to become another person, totally different. Yeah. One may be a connector, another may be a... It's such a wise verse. So that, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, slightly difficult question. So was we, if you are in the... Uh, they said it's, yeah, suppose you are in every individual residency. Your seniors are toxic and you are feeling that like, you know, there's no one with you, you're all alone in the world. So, and I love the person both. Exactly, exactly. So, I love the person. I love these people, people dropping the words. Don't unnecessarily give them more pushes. And yeah, next year, that means you will not get. If you're not comfortable in any relationship or in any college or in any place you work, the only way to train that is to. Get up. Exactly. That was the, my question. That is it worth to be a good institution? And if you are not comfortable, if you are feeling toxic, if you are not, if you are feeling it's not up to the lot, hundred percent you can. Mm. So, so my next question is: As you see now, there are a lot of learning platforms. Yeah, sure. So uh, students usually get confused with yeah, uh, in between those. So, what is your suggestion? I think you better make a plan for each individual something. Okay. So don't have to be actually having plans for everything together. So the core of things are always spent in surgery and you're a first year student. And when you're into a third MBBS, it's like people start watching this. Yes. So you just look at all the deep different teachers who teach these subjects in different platforms. And you see which is the style that is actually coming to easy. Not by watching for just 10 minutes or 15 minutes, you have to properly watch for 2-3 hours. At the end of 2-3 hours, if you feel that, okay, this person's style of teaching is coming to me, then you have to cross it with respect to these spike cream. Because somebody can actually make things very easy and say that the class is good. It's obviously not possible, yes. So strike rate matters. If you see through the past distance and you feel that strike rate is good and that learning courses is coming to you, then you just stick on to that. After the, the serious question, I have one more serious question to you. Uh, as you know, some of the seniors are toxic, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know what is their opinion on that. Like they want to you know, show strictness on data engineers. So once being as a senior, yeah, I believe uh, someone is going to second year, yeah, uh, at this. Uh, as I said, see, yeah, so what would be your suggestion how to behave with the juniors? That is like asking how to behave with a fellow human being. How when you behave with the fellow human being would definitely be like how you behave with your juniors. If you behave with your juniors when, like my parents, or everybody say that, no. If you take care of your parents when, they tomorrow your son will take care of you. As a safety. 
if you don't take care, everything is like karma is what they say. Though. So by me to move around, I come back to you. I think look, seniors, ke baare, if you ask me, it's like how you interact with a normal person. You're asking me like how you interact with this guy. You just have to be normal. You don't have to be doxing. You don't have to impose something and just try to give them some kind of a support. In the sense that when I went to Chennai, I'm not doing community the beginnings. So I don't understand because you know, things happening in the hospital. So when somebody is giving me that comfort, no, then I always like feel okay, nice. So I very fondly remember my senior super as he was actually speaking. So nice would be used to translate everything. So my dad and Tamil are practicing with you to translate everything for me, and that's how we get into that zone, not grow. But I think suicide is more than because of seniors and an individual person not taking medication at the right time. We think we scan through these suicides. Most of these people are having fitness disorder, and depression is a painkiller entity which has to be treated by a psychiatrist. So. You are not actually seeing the psychiatrist or not either to the treatment and not getting out of the fold which you have set up your something. So you basically have to get out of the fold. If you feel that it is not happening for you, it's not about trying to make it happen. Because you get a lot of motivation for several people stay work hard, work hard. You better set up it and try something else. Exactly. If you are able to do it. You are able to do it. Just like you put an IV line, getting a paper line, you try once, you try twice, it's not coming. Better to ask your friend to put a paper line rather than you go to the end of the day. Let's play one more uh, cool game. Yeah. In which, again, you have to choose one option only. Yeah, sure. Uh, so it will be like objective question only. So it, and the first question is, which brand do you like? Right? Yeah. So the first, obviously, is... Uh, Medicine or surgery? Medicine, hundred percent. Now what about the medicine or radiology? Medicine, again, hundred percent. Medicine or cardiology? General medicine or cardiology? Cardiology, I, you tell me, you give me an option to study any science in medicine, or like neuro, nephro, endo, gastro. Do ask me to study again. I think I'm good enough to study. In fact, the cardiology, I'm not good enough to study. I think cardiology is slick. But both, but I hate from not up to the level because it is so complex and it's about so many sub branches. You need good skills, you need to have good surgical skills, cat skills, plus this uh, rhythm of primaries and all that, plus the conventional cardio with the madman and all that is thing. But how do you rate it? Like, general medicine better? The, or cardiology is like more passion and key? Or is general medicine only? Yeah, it, 100%. Then uh, cardiology or neurology? Cardiology or neurology? Like, see, for me, because I'm more a learning person, neurology comes to me very easily. Because I'm very comfortable in learning neurology. I can even learn as much neurology as I want. Whether that has any practically got any value to the patient is a different question. Ways you can learn very comfortably. Cardiology is not comfortable learning. It's like learning with your difficulty. If you want to understand, I'm stuck with cardiology. You have to sit down, boil your head, ask to somebody, then learn. It's very tough to learn. Neurology is not tough to learn. Once your anatomy is solved and solved, very easy to learn. The volume is so much, but it's not really demanding. But cardiology is very enough. There are a lot of cardiologists in the field. Not also, yeah. what do you suggest that someone is, uh, what is like wanted to do cardiology as If you are not good with skin and if you are not finding it possible to compete, you better not. Because it's very just competition. You it's competition and like there are people who are extraordinarily good at this. Yes, if you die competing with them, it's of no value. How would you read nephrology or cardiology? Nephrology only, because nephrology is that science which, again I'm saying with respect to what comes to me, so for me, the priority comes more easily. I'm always looking behind that. Cardiology may be better. Yes. Okay. So that is a different thing what to be. Ask my wife after Indy. She said it's better to become cardiologist. It's better to say cardiologist way. Thanks for the gland. But cardiology doesn't come to me naturally. That's why I'm trying to say so. Nephrology comes to me more naturally. So whatever comes to you, you have to do. That basic idea. So Mab is also medical, sir. She's actually doing community medicine. She's completely community medicine or working as community medicine, yes, sir. Okay, what is your service on the tech? How would you make it? Ours is a proper amings medicine. Kerala matrimony.com. So that's how that shit thing through Kerala matrimony.com that we met. But I was again like, I told you, know, I see everything as a task. So I have a clear idea of what I actually want to do. Yes, that way. Uh, that's so most of the things in, in my personal life are also linked that for me. So we have a quiz on the, uh, was it the books? AI. Yeah. Hey, you choose one of these books, yeah. So, Davidson or Matthew? I haven't read both. Davidson, I tried to read, but I'm not even going to have any kind of connect, establish any kind of connect whatsoever. Okay. So, never try wasting my time reading it. Hutchinson versus Davidson. Hutchinson, I threw away first dates. Oh, I think I had any point. Uh, oh, without any file enemy base, I can study Kundu and other people. Yes, yeah, properly study out it. And for theory, of course, I have uh, gone for classes that time. We had entered classes there. So there was a teacher, Harry Christian, so you used to teach the study this minutes. What's that sort of? Uh, next is uh, uh, Davidson versus Harrison. Again, Davidson, I haven't read. As in, I've tried to read many times, so read almost like in different batches. But again, non-beat a photo, as I've said in my videos. Non-beat. 
take not updated enough as far as I understand. Okay. And last question, sir. Harrison was a CMD. CMDD is much better. Yeah, CMDD is a book which I can actually kind of uh, like I have read. So many chapters are very well written, very well concise. And the core matter has to be questioned well. But I think for a Yuchi, really get the concepts is a question mark. But definitely, he, I understand what would be the reading. Yeah. If a new is the doctor, at least proper things. Say, MBT 2022 means 2022, you will get. 2023 means 2023. Man. It's not like the yeah, old cotton. Or it's a concise form. It's kind of self form. But whether you get the core idea of that topic is a question. Yes, sir. It's like if you're preparing, uh, preparing for your MD finals. Yeah, better. Yeah, always that. Okay. Your first C, definitely. Uh, should it be the uh, college or should it be the batch? That's a very, very debatable question. So many people have come behind me telling this and you shouldn't tell like that at the open. But I am again and again telling you, I don't believe in this course thing because for me, every course is the same. It's about how we do the course. So the basic platform that we have to expand on is our college. Our college will give us the context, our college will give us the series, our college will give us the processes. Yeah. They are the people who help us to explain. Because I went to a city like Chennai and because I studied in a major college, I was able to get in touch with a lot of people and I was able to find out mentors, I was able to present in city beats, I was able to go to a port, I was able to go to so many of the hospitals. That's how I put a stunned for it. If I got long board to that college, I would have never been able to do any of those things. So whatever I think I have been able to do in medicine is just because of the college. So then of course I have to support the government for it. Uh, so as you know, it's like, uh, it is also a bit about the debatable question, you must have a of fans. Yeah. Uh, what, what is the difference between MD and AMD? What should it prefer? See, previously, five years ago, we could sort it, he said that you have to prefer MD. Yes. Because MD was being run in premier centers and MD goes used to be a rather level and AMD used to be running hospitals, there was no stops or nothing. But now what has happened is that so many places where MD is also not being run in a better way. And DNB courses are actually being run well in some of the centers. And especially with respect to subjects like anesthesia, radiology, of that, etc. DNB courses are sometimes much more better than MD courses also. So we can't come to a generalization like that. You have to look at your individual institute. But one thing I want to make very clear is that MD theory is a very capable must. Yes. But DNB theory is not. Yeah, so at the end of three years to pass your theory exam, you have to slog and really pass. But that time, if you are harming family and such responsibilities, will you be able to study that much? Is a question you need to ask to ask. MD, once you end up, then there is no theory issue. Yes. You have to make a pass. Fact also, maximum once you can feel after that, you will fall there. So pass is guaranteed. BNB, there is no guarantee for a pass. So you may consistently keep on failing. Yes. So that time, you will have to really stock hard, which you may not be able to do depending on your age, family, priorities, all this. I yeah. think about this, sir. Uh, it's uh, next serious ask. Should they, should we call? No, 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 no. Yes, and our, like, I, I think Kerala Tamil Nadu is not there. Okay. Here we call like Cheta Chichi, which is equal to calling by year. Yeah, yeah, same the very. I don't know why you should call some of you with one year or two years senior fee or something. We would do this way. At least five years seniority by age means you get called in, sir. Exactly. Do it in your class. And we do three years, okay. Yes. You get caught in, sir. I mean, three years not, but five years, okay. Yes. But more than the plus than the, how can you with calling? Sir, I know. Even most of the time, it can be a bachelor also. Can be a bachelor also, or maybe you want to be a senior or want to be a junior. That really doesn't make sense. That's why MBB is always a rebel when you are a bachelor and tomorrow be your senior. Your senior kid tomorrow be your junior. All these things can happen. So MBB senior may actually become your MBB junior. MBB junior may become your DM senior. So all those formation and operation that was me. So there are times to give enough space to the other person and to behave in dignity. It's the only thing. Yes, sir. And to uh, maintain the uh, in fact, mutual respect, sir, what we can be your suggestion that how we can change the system from like at, at the best level. Uh, so if, if we have mutual respect, right, if we have mutual support for our colleagues. Yeah. So I think the most of the uh, issues of the veteran harassment, obviously you can't control whatever the fact that they stay in the Yeah, exactly. But if you have... But the thing is, see, this is a... Like again, you are taking in three people for the same work. And when you're taking in three people for the same work, three of them may be actually performing in three different events. It's not like a school where they are studying and moving work. It's where they're performing at three people at three different levels. So naturally, there will be a comparison. And in that comparison, somebody has to come one and somebody has to come three. So for that person who comes three, if he's not able to take it in the proper spirit, then nobody can actually help you. Yes. If we have 10 medicine PGs, obviously everybody who is working with these 10 medicine PGs, the back pain pain. Everybody will be having an understanding of who is 1, 2, 3, who is coming in the middle, and who are 7, 8, 9. And do we need to actually find fault for that? It's a question. Because I feel wherever we go, wherever we are working, wherever we are actually putting out the work, 
Where will be a comparison, right? Yes. Yeah, I am compared to Deepak Barla, sir. No. Yeah. Yeah, but for that, should I be happy or sad or anything? Nothing. Because he is also teaching, I also teach. But in nephrology, I will not be compared with him. I will be compared with somebody else. If there's something like that, so wherever you wouldn't be compared, no. Yes. Yeah, where in the apartment where we are staying, these girls will compare their husbands. Same way. Where <laughs> husband is like, with left and is like that, same way. He'll be compared anywhere. So in the comparison, you are based on your cars, you are compared. Based on everything you have compared. So if you're feeling bad for that means, what can you do? Yes. That's normal. Yes. Yeah. You'll be compared with a boy if you're an age, right? Right, right. Oh, well, right. So not so if you're not married, people will ask you why you're not married. Right. Yeah, but you don't ask that to a 20 year old boy. Because you won't expect any married. Yes, sir. Coming to a final uh, discussion about the residency. Yeah. Uh, as you know, most of the students, well, after getting into the MD medicine residency, are young. Yeah. That's there for you. So, what should be their approach? It's like, how should they study? Their first approach would be to stop thinking about doing me and come the first today. If it's about better, you will know to arrange somebody or what. Please stop thinking about this. Just do your residency properly. See managing patients, see how to manage patients, like from your seniors, learn to discuss more about individual things, and then finally, now you see getting into the MS of of K, everybody will get seat. So don't have to unnecessarily bother about that. Develop understanding. We would be respect to my specialist because now because I'm an apologist, I know that I'm not having an opportunity to study neurology. If I want to see a case of a Gillen Barry syndrome now, it's a very hard task for me. I have to go to the neurology department, ask someone, then they'll ask you why you have come. Yes. But, uh, it, it's becoming very complex. But when I'm studying for a B, it's so easy for me. Right? Yes. Yeah, you can do anything that you want. So that's why I'm saying, make use of that. And at the end of your neat PD course, if you feel that, okay, I can go one step ahead in my career by doing this course which will put me in a higher pedestal. Then you actually go for it. There is a friend of mine, Devanaji, who has done medicine MD, done MRC, he stopped with that. And he's put up a big hospital, he's actually doing big, he's flourishing. Privately because he has so much honest and so much focus on medicine. And there are people who have done residency again, BM and not really stay in your order. So it is no mandatory, treats, never mandatory. This. And uh, apart from this, it's like, uh, what's, how should they find their interest in social priority? For example, most of the students are confused, as in the IA. We must have. I think, again, you're going with the theory that uh, what subject comes to you, actually, you know that. Okay. Basically, you ask me by interest, you know, that already is not the subject which I'm interested the most. I got four interest in endocrine, it was much more than yeah. I got interest in endocrine, it was much more than it for. I give so much interest at personal connection with hematology, I feel hematology is like, uh, like a divine science for me. Now, yeah. So I have so much connect, but I don't think I can please myself there. Yes, yeah. So it's more about, not about you liking the girl, it's about the girl liking you back. No, same with you also. Subject has to like you more than you liking the subject. Same way you keep liking the subject qualities. Yes, yeah. So these people are more driven by their interest and their passion. But more than that, whether we are fitting the, the bucket or fitting the box or fitting the criteria is what the dream is. And so, so interesting question said. So suppose the age we are making, uh, we are making your mistake autobiography. We are making your autobiographs. Mm -hmm. So what would be the title of book? I don't think I'm grown up enough to write that much. <laughs> My autobiography, uh, I am mean, definitely not grown up enough to write. It's... But leading a happy life motto in life is to become chi, is to be chi. It's essentially what I want to do. Nothing else. And uh, never allow things to get on top of your head and predict it terms. Yeah. That is the only thing. But I cannot again uh, quote this in general because we see a lot of emotional beings. So most of our students, they are very emotional, yes. emotionally very vulnerable yes. and having emotional ups and downs. Yes. But I am not an emotional person. So that's why my connect is not like so much established. I am very logical, practical, reasoning, dust, uh, that way. But the most of the people that we talk to them finally, it's about, it's about emotions for them. Yes, yeah. For the emotions, come only for very serious things. Yeah, very serious things here as well. But our team, they, there are a lot of emotions like that. Right? Yeah. So that's I think one reason why maybe that kind of true in our people. I think supposedly it made the film, right? Or the African. Yeah. So what we was like star cast, what would it star cast, which sorry. And you, I don't think anybody can start. I didn't have to act myself. Don't put it It is not possible. It's primarily not possible because it's in the mindset more. So my mindset only I know. Your mindset only you know. So somebody to come into that mindset is not swelled it. I cannot get into the mindset of another person. I like Zoni for example and ask you will come to Zoni's mindset is not possible. Yes. I can try and emulate the way he bats. I will show, not score, but show. 
but then how can they translate into mindset? So all of us would like to know who are the influential people behind your. There are so many, many people actually working between different, different, different ways. But nephrology per se, if you ask me, are actually nephrology. It's Stanley, but we call it Edward Fernando. He's a renowned uh, on India very well known nephrologist, very popular. And he has influenced me in all of this. The artist nephrology, but don't tell this personality. And of course, the uh, hematology team at Miyot Hospital, Kishore Sir and Charyan Sir, both of them were very, very personally connected. Very personally connected. And like I, I feel like they are my brothers, kind of. And so that is also there. Now, uh, there are a few people here and there who actually can be end up playing Sri Ram Sir, Shodi Ram Chandra was helped us a lot with respect to our studies and with respect to our initial clinical, clinical studies. So, so many people that way. And different, different boys have asked me for this. But more importantly, what I have felt is that to have conviction with respect to why you are doing this for what purpose. Because so many others are also doing what you are doing. There is nothing that you alone are doing, right? If I am an effort, there are so many methods. If I am doing a course, there are so many others doing the course. If I am giving the exam, so many others are giving the exam. So what am I targeting all of this? What am I actually trying to achieve all of this? What is my principle target? And whether my technique is absolutely good. Technique is wrong means even if I work hard 100 times once, so that will translate into a result. So keep cross-taking the technique, cross-taking the technique and discussing with others to see whether technique is right on top. Technique is okay, then it's fine. Technique is wrong means even if you buy versus it is also no point. Car will not move forward. Yeah, so technique is the cross-taking. Technique is not a very complex thing. We ask 10 people about our technique and we get an idea. Many of them are this others too. Discussing. I think it's very okay. People may talk bad about you also once in a while. That's also fine. That's only when you can actually improvise on your technique. Right? So technique is the one that's after this. And never ask me like, who is your best friend? In the till now, it's like, who are you? Oh, so I mean, so many friends. I don't know. Go to call us my best friend. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the person as an individual who has made maximum changes in my life, I would say is a robot artist, a best friend. Senior of mine, not actually friend, he's 10 years elder to me. But he's made a lot, lot of changes in my life because he was a service media and so we happened to study together. Yes. Yeah, so he's made a lot of change. He's the person who took me out and we, we explore a lot of things. So he's obviously, I think, my best friend. But there's a lot of shit. Yeah. At different levels, different people have supported us. Yes, different levels, different people have supported us. And not just that, friend is a very generalized term. Each inside friend, then we tend subcategories as in it. Yeah, so each category you will be looking for one one more first. And at the moment, it's like uh, when we are growing up, when we are studying, or when we are teaching throughout our life, like we think that we are in a good direction or perfect direction, right? So, but at some times, there must be, there there would be obviously some critic. We have yeah, to. yeah. I actually, that's what I want people to actually come and tell me that the class is not good. All of the, something is not right. If it is good, means you need not tell me it is good. It's understood that it is good. Yes. If there is something that kind of an issue, then you can tell me that what is the issue. If that issue is something which I feel like correcting, there are certain issues which I created by and by told you, like purposefully, deliberately create confusion. Okay, okay so if you are telling me it is confusing, which I have hard for you, I'm not going to correct that. But if you feel that something is there, it can be corrected or some other thing can be. Obviously, that's what I'm looking for. I really want people to come and criticize and critically evaluate and say that this is wrong and this is not good and all that. That's what actually keeps us going. Rather than telling that you are creating that that is not of any value. At the end of the discussion, I just want to you to add this to the students who are watching this stuff. So what would be the message? What would be your message to the community? No message as such. I am nobody to actually give you any message or anything. As far as people watching my videos are concerned, you trust the uh, what do you say, the source and trust the teacher and understand that if you get in sync with him, then whatever he is able to actually communicate with you, we need to develop a kind of a kind of a sync together and you can move forward. So that's the only thing. And uh, always see whether you are able to strike that chord, a connect if you are able to develop. If you develop the cunning, trust the things will come in automatically. And you trust the things also. That's the only thing. And if we think the devices that you are in, that means how much of a case that you are able to see, how many classes you are able to attend. You see how much of a performance you are able to put in and don't take it too seriously, too serious to that, okay? Just try to perform as much as you can. And for your PG also, just keep your options wide open. And don't just keep making lot of life sacrifices for the sake of medicine. Medicine doesn't want you to make any sacrifice, I think. So just try to be very normal. Just try to do whatever somebody else if you have reached through this way. And don't unnecessarily try to complicate by taking 10 things at a time. Just keep it very simple. Understanding that we will have to figure out our way forward in this quick subject. So as long as we are MBB students, we are part of a batch in a medical college. Once we pass out, we are all the assets. So when we are by ourselves, then what can we do to make a living out of this? And how can we make a way forward? 
you can see Yosin Vishal. Vishal has done his medicine post graduation. But he's doing something which a normal medical student doesn't do. That mean, doesn't mean that you have to tomorrow come and do this. It doesn't mean that way. Right? He's able to do this comfortably. He's able to find his pay scale. So he may actually first think this. You have seen that he has also run MBBS, CEO of Armado, Divusavin has also run MBBS, I have also run MBBS. So many people are doing MBBS. There are IES always just run MBBS as well. So MBBS is a platform with which whatever we feel we can actually do, wherever we place ourselves, we feel happy, we move forward. That's the only thing that I can actually take us on. Okay, so so finally, I uh, wish you the very best and uh, hopefully you enjoy your MBBS days because those are the days that are never going to come back. So shouldn't regret later on that I did enjoy that one. So yeah. that should be the prime mode. Yeah, I want you for a bit. Yeah, I want you for a bit. See you later, babe. See you guys. So uh, thank you so much, guys, for watching this. As you saw that uh, the prime message we got today is to chill and to study, and obviously you need to trust your natural instincts. And uh, yes, if you got, if you have really got this, you will go through.